Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the Conflict of Nick channel. I'm your host Nick, and today, after we have concluded the Conflict of Nations unit basic series, I have gotten a lot of requests to do more basic videos, um, and so to speak, more general basics videos, and by that I mean covering, um, you know, basic beginner things, stuff like resource management, um, units, stuff like that. You know, what to do in the beginning of a game. So today what I plan to do, um, especially with all the new players coming in the game, is I want to kind of give my own version of a beginner's guide. I know that there is a lot of beginner's guides out there, and I don't want to be some copycat, but I have my own thought process. I haven't really needed to watch anybody to know you know, what that thought process should be. Um, and so I thought I would show you by going into a sample game today. So you can see my account here, you can see my games. I have a couple games going that are like mid late game. And I just hopped in one here today. Um, it's going to be this game down here, this World War 3 4 time speed. Now, if we go into it, I'm already in it in this tab. So why don't we go here and check it out? So. I am playing as Chad um, in this one for the sample game because this is one of my favorite countries in the game in my opinion and I personally like it because it has a very solid position. Um, as you can see here, if we go to the settings tab, um, there are some very helpful um, things that I'm going to be discussing here shortly. Um, most notably though, you want to be able to n know when to use this toggle political view, it's going to be right below the toggle sound. So, I am in the blue here, and I can see all the different nations in very distinct colors. AI nations are going to be generally gray or white, they're all going to be the same color, like Zambia for example, the Sudans, Niger, Ghana, you know, stuff like that. Um, and playable nations will generally have a more distinct color, apart from ones like Egypt or Iraq that are obviously a more white, whitish color. So when I'm first getting into a game, I kind of like to assess the situation around me um, based on the nation I am playing. So I am the nation of Chad. I'm in the dead center of Africa. I am one of two landlocked nations on the continent apart from the Congo. So this means that when I uh, join this game, I have a couple things on my mind. What is my army going to look like? Or what is my military going to be? And that's the first thing you should really start taking into consideration when you get into a game. Um, let's say you're an island. You probably want to get some ships early on, like some corvettes for protection. But as Chad, I don't need to do that. I need to focus on a big land army and a very solid air force. Now in the beginning, I see that I have a lot of some people around me. I have Nigeria around me. I have Cameroon, the Congo, I have Libya. Now, Libya doesn't really usually attack in this position, um, attack Chad that is, um, because of these huge provinces of desert, and usually it leaves Chad alone. It's mostly these guys you have to worry about, including the Congo as well. So one thing I will look for is that there are any coalitions in the area. So I can see there is a couple African coalitions, one that has a couple random countries in it, and the Congo has made one with a lot of countries right around me. And so depending on what you want to uh, do in your game, if you want to be a coalition player, if you want to play a solo game, um, you could find a coalition around you and you could join them. Now something you want to might take, it in, take into consideration will be the player level um, and you know how active they seem. You don't want to join a coalition and they just be inactive um, because usually that's not going to benefit you at all, you'd be better off solo. So you want to look at the players around you um, and see who might be a good fit. Um, personally for me, when I'm going for a solo match like I am now, you want to look around you and look at what um, your first snack needs to be. And by that I mean you are going to want to expand because it is necessary for your growth as a nation if you're playing solo to get bigger and have more resources. So I see that I have two countries right near me one dangerously close to my capital, so this might be one of my first targets. Uh, Nigeria as well might be a first target for me. Um, and you want to see generally what these nations are doing. So what I want to do first of all is I want to start building some army bases. Because army bases are going to allow me to build uh, basic land armies um, that I will need to ensure my country's survival and ensure that I have a strong land army. So why don't we go ahead and do that? 
I'm going to hold control and move my mouse down to select all my cities at once. I'm going to go into construction and I'm going to build the army base level one. Now I have a, um, a premium thing here. I have the security council so I can queue things, but we're, we're going to act like we don't have that right now. So now what I want to do is I want to go basically research the thing that we all need most at the beginning of our games, basic infantry. It takes a minute and 30 seconds, very quick, and it's very important because you will want to start building these right away. Now this is the first thing you'll want to do in a nation like this where you're basically purely land based. Now, now that these are done, the other thing you want to do is do the same thing I just did where you can press control and use the mouse. Go into construction and you are going to want to build recruitment offices. Now what's good about recruitment offices? This is going to be a building that decreases the mobilization speed of your units. Uh, increases manpower generation by a flat bonus of 200 which is really nice but the main thing is also speeding up your troop building um, so we are going to head and we're going to go ahead and build one of those in every city and now that our research is done of the motorized infantry we can go ahead and start building motorized infantry in every city notice that the costs are combined because I have multiple cities selected so this is going to be the cost for building six motorized infantry level one it's going to cost a sizable amount of supplies components manpower and cash so we're going to go ahead and do that because that's what we need to do right away to build up our army now recruitment offices take a little bit more time they take about 30 or so in-game minutes um, and then we will focus on more important buildings so now that I have that going we take a look at what our country has currently with its military. We see that we have, if you hold your right click and move your mouse, you can select all the units in the country. We have 12 motorized infantry, one towed artillery piece, an air superiority fighter, and two combat recon vehicles. Now, the most important things in the beginning uh, even the motorized infantry are very important, are going to be these three things here. The towed artillery, the air superiority fighter, and the combat recon vehicle. The recon vehicle is going to be one of your most important units early game because it provides you armor. It's going to make sure that your um, motorized infantry has um, an increased survivability, and it's going to uh, soak up damage, and it's also going to give you these nice scout buffs. Um, and also de deal um, some decent defense damage to aircraft, which motorized infantry do not get very um, good values for at an early level. Your fighter, if we go ahead and get this guy off the ground, he is going to be one of your more key um, vital roles in the beginning because he is going to allow you to scout um, enemy borders. Let's say I wanted to scout here. I can go see what's in this city right here, and I can see if there's anything on my border. Or I could see if there's anything in this mountain terrain here. But I'm going to have him patrol over my capital for now. This blue circle that you see here, if I get rid of the toggle political view, you will see that this circle is the circle that he will be able to see things in. The radar goes a little bit further than that, but you won't see the actual units, you will just see the contact. So this circle is going to allow you to um, scout your enemies out a little bit and see what, so where some of their troop movements are going, um, etc, etc. So that's going to be one of your more important things. And it's also going to allow you to shoot down other enemy aircraft at the very beginning, potentially enemy helicopters or other enemy aircraft such as fighters. And it's also going to provide you a nice little um, uh, close air support role um, when you're taking down AI nations such as Niger. So the third unit that we're going to be going over that is very important is going to be the towed artillery. This is one of the most important ones because the artillery piece does 3.5 damage um, to infantry and normally it wouldn't do 3.5 to hard targets in the European or uh, Western Doctrine. But the Eastern Doctrine gets the best towed artillery which means it would do 3.5 to each. This is going to have a range of 50 and will provide you some actually decent um, artillery support in the early game um, and that's very important because 3.5 damage is bigger than most people think especially in the early game which is why you want to make sure that this thing um, survives and is in a, a strategical place a position that you are going to have an advantage in 
you are not going to want to put this in jungles of course um you are going to want to put this in mountains potentially so now that i kind of have an idea of where i want to go i think i want to go for a full nation because he has a lot of cities and i think that i need to take him down now i could go for cameroon or nigeria i'm going to go for hmm I am going to go for Cameroon because of a couple reasons. Though he is in a coalition, um, one, they do not seem to be building up very much, and so they seem somewhat inexperienced. Um, that goes with all their allies. Two, the Congo, who is his other ally who borders me, is actually going for Angola right now. So that will allow me to kind of third party, if you will, and take Cameroon and hopefully start taking the Congo as well. So I'm going to go ahead and move my troops to the city of Biberati. I'm going to use the mass select and send these seven units to meet with this three unit stack which will make a 10 stack. Now something very important to do in the early game is to make sure you attack with 10 stacks and that is going to increase the survivability of your um, stacks in the early game because um, basically how it works is the more attacks you have to go through the more potential you have to take damage. If you can deal more damage in a couple attacks and take care of the enemy faster, rather than having to attack them multiple times and do less damage, you're going to take less damage if you only have to attack a couple times and end up doing a lot more to them if you're in one stack because of how attacks in this game work. So now that we have that figured out, we're going to make a massive attack and combine it, and we're going to send some of our infantry from our capital to go start taking regular, regular provinces. Now something about taking provinces that is very important is that they each produce some cash and manpower and that's very important. Every, prov every province will be very crucial, especially in the early game to you. Um, sometimes even more than cities. If you, if you take a lot of provinces, that's going to be very beneficial for you um, because it's going to give you that general cash and manpower bonus and it's going to be something very important that you want to do because it will give you um, a nice resource boost. Now once you have these things figured out, we can start looking at more of a worldwide scale. So we have some nice features here on the show settings tab on the right hand side. We have these uh, toggle political view button, which I told you what that does. It shows all the nations in different colors and it can easily allow you to see who's expanding where, what country you're going towards, etc, etc. The toggle fog of war. Um, is not something much of strategic use, but more so if you want to see the map better, it's going to make the map lighter. Personally, this hurts my eyes a lot, so I don't use this at all. Um, but as you can see, your country is highlighted when you have your homeland or occupied territories. This just makes the whole map bright. So I really don't use this, but you can if you want to have your screen brighter. Toggle resources is going to basically these little icons in your cities. This button is just going to remove that or put it back on. I would leave this on so you know what resources are what. Um, toggle population morale. This is going to be one of your more important ones. So if we click on this, morale is something very important in this game. So we can see that my whole country is basically the same color. It's got around 70% in the cities and provinces. And that's normally where you're going to start. The useful thing about this is that when you go into this view, you can easily see where some combat is happening. So I can see some combat is happening in Angola, of course, I can see some is happening um, in Cameroon, I can see some in Europe, and this will show you where people are starting to expand and where invasions and attacks are taking place because the morale is being lowered. So any shade of orange or red is going to mean combat is, t is happening there or that is an occupied territory. So that will show you where some early combat is happening. Now if we go out of this, we can toggle army details. Now, this will basically remove that little green tab you saw here. It has a number of troops in the uh, army and it has the flag of the army. So obviously my nation's flag. You can toggle that, turn that off or turn it back on. I would personally leave this on all the time. It is up to you, but it's very useful to keep that on. Toggle units. Basically, this removes all units from your view on the map and you could turn this on simply by pressing this helmet again. Toggle connections. This is one of the more important ones in my opinion. So you see how I have these lines here. If I set this recon unit to go to this desert province, you could see it has to follow these lines. These are the routes that land units have to take. 
if you remove this or if you click on this when it's already on it will remove these and it will kind of more easily allow you to see your provinces and what kind of terrain they are as you can see this little icon here is a desert um this one i have a lot of desert here this one is an open field because it has nothing and this one is going to be a suburb and this one is going to be a forest so you could turn that on easily by clicking that and now one of the more important ones that i've also already gone over in prior videos is toggle terrain types this is going to show you what all terrain types are make up your homeland and make up the world obviously dark blue is going to be deep water light blue is going to be coastal water and as you see chad has a little bit of everything here chad has a lot of desert in the north a lot of um open fields in the center some suburbs here some forests jungles and mountains it has everything except tundra basically now what this means is that this is kind of useful information because now i can look at my enemies and look at my own country and see what might work for me knowing that my country is generally flat and has a lot of desert and um, open fields i know that i might be very vulnerable to armored assaults because armor does very well in desert terrain and uh, flatlands and so i know that countries like uh, nigeria um, Libya and other countries like Egypt are also very vulnerable to that and so terrain is very good to know because also terrain like jungles enemies will have a very hard time taking because of all the debuffs it brings so really this is very good knowledge for you and it will allow you to see what you need to do to defend your country and what will work best for you so you can easily untoggle that by clicking that icon again this button just reloads your game you can report a bug here um, with this button to report something and these are just credits and this is full screen zoom in zoom out but I personally just use my mouse wheel so now that we've said all that our recruitment offices are done now what we can do is we can build uh, arms industries We are going to use the same control and click button. And you can see that we have some numbers in red now. That means we don't have enough of these resources to build all, all six well, all arms industries in all six of our cities. So that means we have a problem. We need to figure out how to get those resources because building these arms industries are going to be very important in the early game because each level of an arms industry increases the resource production of your city by 10 percent level one gives you 10 percent level two gives you 20 percent all the way up to 50 percent at level five to build these it's going to require a little bit of everything it's going to require all five resource types including cash and it's not going to require manpower but it's going to require resource types now what we want to do to get that because we need these uh, industries in all of our cities is we want to go to the market tab so if we go to see how much we need, we need 2,100 fuel and 1,500 electronics to build these. These resources we have, these we do not. That, that will basically always be the case in your early game. So we see we have 1.6k fuel and 1.5k electronics. So we basically have the electronics and we do not have enough fuel. So we're going to go to the show market tab. We're going to go uh, to the resources that we need. So we're going to see, we need to go to this tab. Now we have some offers here. These are AI offers. What you wanna do is you want to buy as much as you need and you can um, type in exactly the amount you want or you can just buy the full offer and it will tell you how much you cost or it's gonna cost you and how much you'll get. So we're gonna take that offer and I think we have enough. We're gonna buy a hundred electronics because we, we want to have some left over. I type in a hundred there. It's going to cost me a thousand. We're going to go ahead and buy that. Now, if we do it now, we should have enough and boom, we can start six industries. Now that's going to be really crucial in the early game because it's going to allow you to build certain unit types as well as boost your resource production. Now the market is something you want to always know how to use because it is going to be very vital when you need resources badly. You can sell your, some of your resources for cash and then buy resources you might need more for cash because you just got more cash. So now what I can see is that we are going to probably need some rare and I'll say why in a second. 
So something about resource management that I always think about when starting a game is what am I going to research in this game? What resources am I going to need to focus on? Um, stuff like that. And the beginning thing you want to focus on when you're starting a game is besides motorized infantry, which is when you, what you always want to research, you want to start researching a unique unit, if you will. That's what I like to call it, because I like to make sure I research this always and figure out a unit that I want to research that will not come as easily as motorized infantry. So if we're in the desert and we're um, in the, like, a landlocked country, for example, like Chad, we might want to go for something like armor. Now we can see that we have six cities. We have a fuel producing city, two uh, supply producing cities, a rare city, um, a component city, and an electronic city. So we have two supply cities, so we're gonna have a better supplies outcome than most of the resources. And going to the resource tab, we can see that clearly. We have, if you go hover over this resource, we can see we make 2.5K supplies a day and we use 620 a day so really we're going to net about 1900 a day right now because uh the game is going to track what we're building and it's going to take that into consideration so this is going to go up as we increase our resource production and expand our components are 1.5k a day which is still not bad fuel is 1.3k a day electronics is 800 that's really bad and rare materials is 750 a day, which is also pretty bad. Our cash is going to be up about 10,000 and manpower about two and a half thousand. So what we're gonna wanna do is know where our strengths are in terms of resources and know what our weaknesses are. If you have a components heavy country, um, let's say Saudi Arabia has two component cities, you can sustain a pretty decent Navy and Air Force if you do your um, resources right. So we, what we want to do is we want to exploit our um, strengths. So we can see that we have options here. BMPs are going to cost components and electronics. That might not be a good option for us. So most armor might not be a good option for us because it's going to require components. We have support units, which is going to cost uh, a lot of components and supplies as well as electronics. Um, which might not be good for us right away because most of these also require a lot of buildings Mobile AA might be a good thing to start off with because it doesn't cost electronics. It costs components and supplies So it's somewhat expensive, but it doesn't require that many buildings to build and it takes about 30 minutes to research So you can research it quickly and it gives you armor as well But something I always like to do is Chad which is one of which is one of the game changers for me is going to be the helicopter gunship because as the Eastern Doctrine, um, Chad being the Eastern Doctrine, we get the best gunships out of all doctrines, which means we can also research it day one. Helicopter gunships are going to cost supplies and electronics, and they're very useful in the beginning because if we go to level one, we can see they do 7-2 infantry, and that's mostly where you're going to be fighting in the early game. So we might want to go ahead and research that because also we can build it in our capital because we have a level one airbase already. So that is going to be what we're going to do in the beginning of the game. So from there, most of the stuff you're going to be doing in the beginning of the game is already done. Like I said, I am doing solo um, gameplay and basically I've done about all I can do. I've got my resource production building. I've got a unique unit producing, which is going to be my helicopter. I've got infantry building and overall I've got my units moving and I know exactly what my goals are. So now, at this point, there's not much left we can do until our units get into place, and that's when we will start getting into combat. So this is generally my thought process in the beginning of a game. If you're playing with people, you can take on specific roles, but as a solo player, you might have to do a little bit of everything. So choose your country wisely. Like I said, I like Chad because I know that I can focus mainly on Air Force and land without having to worry about naval because none of my homeland is really close to a coastline so I can't really get touched by ships. So keep that in mind. We will be going over things like annexation later of cities um, and other things like that. So guys, I hope this video helped you, um, especially the newcomers to the game who might not know how to start a game right away. I hope to see all of these level one players that I see in most of my games now, hopefully start becoming active and being able to build up and be uh, have a good time in the game. 
and overall i just want to help people learn the game so it can be more fun for people um and i hope you all enjoyed this and found this helpful so guys have a beautiful day and i hope you guys are liking all the basics videos i'm doing um it means a lot to me and i will catch you guys in the next video have a good one